Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless well mine's a little dark i just feel a lot of concern that 2024 may be the year of a black swan event this is a national security event with high impact that's very hard to predict powerful people in the world you know, they see themselves as utterly incapable of actually creating a future in which everything's going to be okay. A colossal compound on the island of Kauai, complete with a massive doomsday bunker. What is it with billionaires and their doomsday bunkers? But I mean, the question is, what do they know that we don't know? They're prepping for some kind of large-scale disaster. I'm a bit worried about it, to be honest. Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Meta, has started to prepare for the doomsday. Is there something that Mark Zuckerberg seems to know that we don't? How many have seen The Last of Us in the zombie apocalypse? <laughs> Now, billionaires have many obsessions, supercars, ice baths, exotic animals, you name it, and billionaires usually have it. But off late, they seem to have a new obsession, bunkers. The top 1% are building bunkers. Mark Zuckerberg is constructing one in Hawaii, and it's worth $270 million, $270 million. It's almost like a status symbol now. But why do the super rich need bunkers? Are they trying to survive a war? Maybe another pandemic? or an apocalypse. Do they know something that we do not? Blast-resistant doors, equipped with its own food and energy supplies. This is a 5,000 square foot shelter, located underground in Hawaii. The price tag of the project is $270 million. If you want to survive an apocalypse, this is the place to be. Who does this belong to? Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg. The billionaire is building a bunker, and he isn't the only one. Former PayPal CEO Peter Thiel tried to build one in New Zealand. Bill Gates has plenty of underground security areas, apparently one under each of his homes. Of course, these are the higher-end ones, but you could get yourself a basic one for $500,000. It's almost like buying an expensive car. And for billionaires, it's a good way to use some loose change. But where are they building them? Apparently all over the world. But a popular choice seems to be New Zealand. It's attributed to its secluded location, which brings us to the boom in the companies building these survival shelters. Some of them are just basic shelters. They are underground, they have all the essentials, you can survive there for a few weeks. But a handful of them go a step further. Like this one project that includes an island fortress. This is not just a bunker. The entire island is like a fort, with an inflammable moat. Basically, if you try to step foot on the island, it will burn down. But you will be perfectly safe inside the underground bunker. Sounds perfect for a zombie apocalypse. But why are the super rich building bunkers? What are they so scared of? In the last five years, the world has survived a lot. A global pandemic, two wars, climate change, some of these bunkers have registered nurses, a collection of drugs, decontamination booths, medical supplies. One even has a full-fledged operating table. Basically, you can survive anything in there. It's almost like modern-day Noah's Ark. If you are in the bunker, you are likely to survive almost all catastrophes. But it's not for everyone. It's only for the chosen few. And here, Noah is not making the choice. The world's super-rich are making it for themselves. But beneath all these underground bunkers lies a dark truth. It's that death is truly the great equalizer. And the super rich, just like us, fear it too. They cannot buy their way out of it, even with these underground bunkers and fortresses. But that hasn't stopped them from trying. Revelation 6, 15 through 17. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man, hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand? The pandemics, 
social unrest, rumors of wars, and other disasters that people are worried about were prophesied over 2,000 years ago to happen. We are watching the fulfillment of these prophecies begin to take place right before our very eyes. It is a pretty good indicator that Jesus is returning soon when we see society preparing for the apocalypse. The truth is, these doomsday bunkers will not protect the unsaved from the wrath of God that is soon to come on an unbelieving and unrepentant world. Only putting your faith in Jesus Christ can, and he is the only way. John 14.6 Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. One person was killed and seven injured today by incoming mortar fire by Hezbollah into northern Israel. This as U.S. envoy Amos Hochstein arrived back in the region and will visit Israel and Lebanon amid growing desperate efforts to de-escalate the deadly cross-border exchanges. One person was killed and seven others wounded in an anti-tank missile attack from Lebanon today that struck an orchard near the border community of Margaliot. The Magenda Vira Dome said that the man in his 30s was killed and two others are listed in serious condition. The victims are all foreign laborers, apparently from Thailand. Before the arrival of Amos Hakstein on his latest diplomatic effort, a Lebanese official said the timing of the visit points to progress in efforts to secure a pause in Gaza fighting that would hopefully extend to Lebanon. But nothing on the ground is pointing in that direction as the IDF strikes deepen as Hezbollah attacks continue. Lebanon is concerned that the IDF will continue hitting Hezbollah even if there is a pause in Gaza fighting. There is panic that the exchanges with Hezbollah will intensify even more and include an IDF maneuver into Lebanon. Meanwhile, it's being reported in Lebanon that the grandson of Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah Abbas Ahmed Khalil was one of the three Hezbollah terrorists killed on Saturday by an IDF drone strike in Nakura. This is yet to be confirmed by official sources. Khalil's father, known as Abu Ali Noah, is Nasrallah's personal escort and is also reported to fight alongside the Syrian regime and pro-Iranian militias in Syria. The IDF claimed responsibility for the Nakora attack, stating it targeted terrorists from the Iman Hossein division who had launched rockets at Israel. The Bible tells us there are four possible prophecies on the verge of finding fulfillment. Isaiah 17.1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83 in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Ukraine says it's destroyed another Russian warship in the Black Sea. Now, a Ukrainian military spokesman said the patrol boat had previously been targeted but was blown up overnight by maritime drones in the Kirsch Strait near Crimea. The attack follows the launching of 22 Russian drones targeting the Ukrainian port of Odessa. Uh, footage on Russian social media that uh, pur purportedly shows the attack. We see and hear machine gun fire presumably coming from the warship as it's trying to fend off the drone or drones, followed by a large explosion. And uh, footage that's now been released by the Ukrainian intelligence seems to show the same attack again with a large explosion. But from the point of view, it seems of a camera on board uh, one of the drones in this um, uh, attack. What's also worrying from a Russian 
Russian perspective. This is one of its newest warships. It's fairly small, only a crew of 80, but it came into service only in 2022. And like other warships in the Black Sea, uh, new or old, it doesn't seem to have an answer to these Ukrainian drones. Luke, 2125, and there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days right before the return of Jesus Christ is nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. The international airport has stopped operating. No flights in or out. Paralyzed by gang violence like much of the country. A gang leader and former police officer Jimmy Charizé, nicknamed Barbecue, has claimed responsibility for the attacks, saying the aim is to force the Prime Minister Ariel Henry to stand down. In an unusual move, the gangs are uniting to bring down the government, and analysts say this could be a turning point in a Haiti's already tumultuous history. The government gave us the weapons to fight with our brothers and sisters. Now we turn the guns against them to fight them because they don't do anything for us. Gangs have overrun two of the main prisons in the capital, releasing several thousand prisoners, including gang leaders. Gun battles are taking place in the streets. Prisoners have escaped from several jails. It's miserable. The crisis is getting worse. Everywhere is unsafe. I can't find clients for my taxi to make money to feed my children. I'm an old man. Nothing seems to be functioning here anymore. Thousands of people are fleeing their homes. Many are having to queue up to get clean water. Some tell Al Jazeera they haven't been able to find drinking water since Sunday. We feel discouraged. We're fleeing. Our children can't go to school. We can't buy food. How can we live in such a situation? We're fighting our fellow Haitians while we're the same Haitian people. The U.S. administration has urged Americans to leave the country as soon as possible. Canada has closed its embassy and some aid organizations have suspended their operations due to the dangerous situation. The Prime Minister flew to Kenya last week to finalize a deal to set up a UN task force led by Kenya to help restore order. That triggered this latest crisis. But there are still no UN troops on the ground to help authorities restore order and the Prime Minister has yet to return. Is global chaos the new normal? As anyone can plainly see, the world is in a state of decay, moral, economic, political, every way possible. People are saying the world is out of control and looking for someone, anyone, to rescue the planet. Soon, very soon, a leader will appear on the horizon that appears to have all the answers, to calm the oceans, to bring peace to all the nations. His title will be the Antichrist, and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind that his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. So yes, global chaos is the new normal until the Lord Jesus Christ comes at the end of the Antichrist's seven-year reign of terror and establishes true peace on earth. Markets across Chad have lost their bustle. Traders struggle to sell their products as fewer buyers come to make a purchase. When they do, it's a fraction of what they used to buy. Bread, milk, meat, vegetables, everything is expensive. Prices have doubled in most cases. We are barely surviving. Traders say they're not to be blamed. When we transport goods, we pay almost double of what we used to. The transporters tell us it's because of the increase in cost of fuel. The effect of that is clearly felt by the people of Chad. Two weeks ago, the government of Chad announced a hike in the price of fuel. Hours later, it declared an emergency in areas of food and nutrition. The United Nations listed Chad as one of the world's most insecure countries in terms of food supply, mainly due to impact of climate change. The World Food Programme says the food in this warehouse is all it has for the 17% of Chad's population. That's 2.9 million people who depend on it for their supplies. The UN agency says it needs $240 million to provide food for the next six months. And right now, it's out of money. Eight agencies warn 
the current shortages and inflation are set to get worse. It's the poor who have lost out, especially now that aid agencies have little or no money to help. We are currently living in a time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. We are fast approaching a time known as the tribulation that Jesus says will be the worst time in human history as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. We are currently witnessing events that will continue to become more frequent and more intense until God pours out his final judgments on an unbelieving and unrepentant world. One of the judgments described in the book of Revelation includes the price of food being so high and scarce that it will cost a full day's wages just to barely get enough to eat as we read in Revelation 6, 5, and 6. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. In this prophecy, it will cost a day's wages just for a loaf of bread. We are not in the tribulation period yet, but we are getting extremely close. John 15, 18-20 If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. No verse from the Bible should be prohibited in the United Kingdom. Preacher to appeal conviction for holding sign with scripture passage. This afternoon, the judge has found me guilty of, of an offence in the public spaces protection order outside the Mari Stokes in Ealing, and uh, she's uh, given me a conditional discharge, but uh, there are the prosecution costs, which of course I'm refusing to pay. But, uh, uh, and we are going to appeal to the, to the Crown Court. The judgment effectively says that it is not permitted to utter or have a sign with certain words outside this abortion centre in Ealing or anywhere within the Public Spaces Protection Order. So the placard I stood there with was Psalm 139 and verse 13. It says, For thou hast possessed my reins, which means my insides, my kidneys, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. So that's a verse about human development in the womb. They said that that was a, a scripture concerning abortion. I never quite worked out how that was concerning abortion, but they said it was concerning abortion. And that meant that I was guilty of protesting against abortion. My point is that the Bible, not any verse from the Bible may be prohibited in this United Kingdom. Otherwise, we have the Bible in chains. So the Bible must be unchanged and set free, even if it is in some public spaces protection order, even if the local council wants to protect commercial enterprises making money from bloodshed, nevertheless, we should be free. If you do nothing, the state just takes more and more of your freedom. And in the end, you, you could do nothing. You know, you're locked down in your homes or something, or you're forced to take a vaccine, or you can't say this or you can't say that. We can't have that. And we must stand up for freedom, in particular, the freedom to preach the gospel. There is nothing more essential to the world than the gospel of Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, Paul declares what the gospel is and how important it is to embrace it and share it with others. He reminds the Corinthians of the gospel he preached among them, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, that Christ is coming back for his church someday in the rapture according to the scriptures, as we read in 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 55. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? Jesus promised his followers he was going to go and prepare a place for them in his Father's house, where there are many mansions, as we read in John 14, 1-3. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. 
In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. This is the essence of the gospel, the pure gospel of Jesus Christ, his death on the cross for sinners, his resurrection to everlasting life, and his coming back someday is central to our Christian faith. 1 Corinthians 1.18 For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24.12, And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3.4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. In the Kansas City suburb of Independence, Missouri, a procession of police officers escorted the body of one of their own to the medical examiner's office, the latest American police officer killed in the line of duty. Our thoughts and prayers are with all of the families and this entire community that has been devastated. The tragedy unfolded yesterday afternoon when a court employee tried to serve an eviction notice at this home. That's when police say someone inside opened fire, killing Drexel Mack, a civil process server in his early 40s. The suspect then opened fire on first responders, killing 35-year-old police officer Cody Allen, a father of two. The incident, similar to a recent shooting in Minnesota. Thousands gathered in the Minneapolis suburb of Burnsville Wednesday, paying their respects to two police officers and an EMS worker shot and killed while responding to a hostage situation on February 18th. The number of police officers shot on duty in the U.S. has hit a record high. 378 were shot last year. That's a 62% increase since 2018. The Apostle Paul in his epistle to Timothy tells us in the last days society will be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. New developments in the killing of a young pregnant Amish woman in her home in northwestern Pennsylvania, a suspect under arrest now and making an appearance in court. This killing has absolutely shaken the Amish community in rural Pennsylvania. And now we're learning new details about who investigators say killed 23-year-old Rebecca Byler. Police arresting 52-year-old Sean Cranston. He was in court for arraignment this weekend, facing a slew of charges, including two counts of criminal homicide for allegedly killing Byler and her unborn baby. A dramatic and deadly scene unfolded last night inside a dentist's office near San Diego. Police in El Cajon say a man opened fire with a handgun. He killed one person, two others were hurt. One of the many signs that we're living in the end times is the epidemic of wickedness and violence that is sweeping the world today. Jesus tells us when society parallels the days of Noah, he will return, as we read in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So what was going on in Noah's day that parallels our day? To find out the answer, we need to go back to the book of Genesis 6, 5 through 13. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. 
Noah walked with God, and Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. There is no doubt about the hour in which we live being the season for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ as we link Matthew 24, verses 12 and 37 through 39 with 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. The Bible describes our day very clearly from these scriptures. The condition of wickedness and violence that caused the earth to be destroyed in Noah's day is the same condition our earth is in today. Psalm 917 The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Now to the wildfires burning in Texas as crews struggle to contain them. This morning, the battle to contain the Smokehouse Creek wildfire rages on. These stunning satellite images released by Maxar capturing the toll of the wildfires. Photos showing the once vibrant landscape, now blackened earth in Fritch, Texas. Shea Mesnard's bait shack in Fritch, Texas is now a donation hub for victims of the wildfires. Authorities are now estimating that thousands of cattle have been killed as a result of the fires, potentially impacting the nation's beef supply. There is no grass on the ground for them to eat, so hay is of dire importance. If you don't get the hay to the livestock, what happens here? The meat market dies. In the book of Job, chapter 37, 5 through 13, we learn that God controls the weather. God thunders marvelously with his voice. He does great things which we cannot comprehend. For he says to the snow, fall on the earth, likewise to the gentle rain and the heavy rain of his strength. He seals the hand of every man that all men may know his work. The beasts go into dens and remain in their lairs. From the chamber of the south comes the whirlwind and cold from the scattering winds of the north. By the breath of God ice is given and the broad waters are frozen. Also with moisture he saturates the thick clouds. He scatters his bright clouds and they swirl about being turned by his guidance that they may do whatever he commands them on the face of the whole earth. He causes it to come, whether for correction or for his land or for mercy. Correction is the Hebrew word Shabbat, which means, literally, a stick for punishing, writing, fighting, ruling, walking, etc. Job 37.13 can be translated like this. He causes it to come, whether for punishment, or for his land, or for mercy. God controls the weather for three reasons. For punishment, for his land, or for mercy. The extreme weather we have been witnessing is clearly punishment. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A, admit that you're a sinner. B, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C, call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin he has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming.
You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.